like she said, I had the opportunity to participate in the uh, 2009 ACM Tanzania program, which was an incredible experience for me. Uh, so today I'd like to talk a little bit about my experience there and uh, how it forced me to grow and gave me a better sense of what I'm passionate about. Well, first off, I'd like to briefly describe what we did in the program. Well, we, fent, we spent uh, our time uh, in three different parts, basically. Uh, initially, we were in the dorms at the University of Dar es Salaam, uh, taking coursework uh, for seven or eight weeks uh, in ecology, uh, Swahili, uh, human evolution, and uh, research methods course. Uh, and then after a short break, kind of on our own, uh, we spent about seven weeks camping in northern Tanzania. Uh, and two of those weeks were devoted to professor-led field trips for our ecology and human evolution courses. And the remaining five weeks or so, we were at our field site doing independent research. And that's just a, kind of a bad map, but as you can see, we're in north central Tanzania, kind of right in between the Silver and Lake Minyara and Tarangiri National Park. That's where we conducted our uh, independent research projects. Uh, and so the field portion, portion of our stay there uh, definitely had the greatest impact on me. Uh, living and working in uh, rural Africa, uh, definitely uh, in a rural setting for a little over a month is an experience that uh, I'll never forget. Uh, our campsite was located on the edge of a small village, uh, but for the most part, uh, the base around us was completely wide open, and uh, Terry Geary, Maasai bonus dotted the landscape. Uh, we then conducted research for four weeks uh, before presenting uh, our results to the community at the National Park headquarters. Well, initially I left the U.S. with this vague plan to do a geology project uh, in light of Lake Minyara Basin being uh, the location of our field site, uh, and all the rift activity in that portion of Africa, I thought it would be interesting to study uh, Lake Marchin geology of the ancient lake. Uh, but after doing some preliminary research and proposal writing, I decided that that topic was uh, a little bit beyond my capabilities. And so I simplified it a bit and made it a bit more broad. And uh, I ended up doing a smaller scale reconnaissance geology project uh, wherein I explored different areas of the lake basin uh, and sought to capture uh, the diversity of more than just lake margins. Uh, but of geologic events that happened prior to and after the lake retreating at different stages. Well, the research process was definitely uh, the most challenging part of my program, uh, but overall it was a good experience because it forced me to overcome issues and problem solve, which helped me grow. Uh, what it also did, however, was kind of point me in this new direction and in a new interest. So in the process of my field experience, uh, whether I was surveying geologic exposure, uh, walking transects, or asking permission from landowners, I found myself much more interested in what people were up to and how they were doing rather than the geology of the area. But it was interesting to study both geology and a new culture at the same time uh, because it made me just start to think about where those two things meet, where uh, objective science meets the humanities and where natural resources and humans meet. And so I can say that a lot of my growth was in taking observations and drawing connections between people and the land. Uh, and in many cases, um, the best geologic exposure uh, was in places that had been dug up for a well or a borrow pit. And these observations led me to this new interest in water. I was able to see the quality of the water people were drinking and having their cattle drink. And it was interesting talking to residents about water. And I was working with a colleague who was doing uh, a research, an anthropology research project on uh, water and sense of place amongst the Maasai. And all of these things continued to pique my interest. People would tell me about their water situation where they got water, how far they had to travel, and the quality of the water they were drinking. And more often than not, situations were very unfortunate. I was able to see on an almost a daily basis people drinking from these sources, and it was hard to see because the water was usually not clear. It either had a thick tan color, sometimes it was nearly opaque. In addition, many people told me that the water was salty and that the groundwater that the community was able to obtain uh, was too salty to drink. And unfortunately, I had a good idea why the water was so salty uh, because of the research I had done in the lake basin. So I started picturing where the geology and water use met. And from a geologic standpoint, um, a lot of the water in the basin is salty because the water table uh, was probably relatively high uh, because of the saline nature of the current Lake Minyar. And secondly, the ancient lake that once filled the entire basin uh, was shallow and wide. So it was very susceptible to evaporation and this left salts. This thought process, along with these daily observations, uh, made me question what the benefits of natural resource experts and geologists could be to an area struggling with water management and obtaining clean water. And also, what I could be doing to help. 
and it wasn't necessarily what I could do then because I still felt relatively powerless in a new scary place, uh, but rather what I could do when I returned to the States, what kinds of things I could study, what kinds of jobs I could be looking for, and even what I could write my senior paper on. So after returning to the States, I really had the time to finally process what had happened in Tanzania and uh, what I had taken from my experience in the field doing research. And this is a lot of where uh, my personal growth happened, making sense of what I had seen and how I felt about it. I found that I was a lot more passionate about and interested in people than I thought I was before. Kind of a shocking realization from the idea that I was restricted to the objectivity of some of my studies. That I was more interested in the struggle to obtain drinking water than that I was in understanding the geology there. It was something to, that was new to me. So I started thinking of ways that I could f facilitate these new ideas and use my interests and my skills. I thought of the Peace Corps or grad school or jobs in natural resource management. Maybe I could return to Africa somehow. Well, what's ended up happening first has been my senior paper. I decided to do a project on water in East Africa. More specifically, integrated water resources management in East Africa. An argument for its benefits in rural East Africa, especially in light of climate changes looming in the not so distant future. Ultimately, my experience in Tanzania has had a significant impact on my life. And I do think that it's facilitated ideas that I can be passionate about for the rest of my life. In light of how crucial water is in every facet of our lives, I'd someday I'd like to use my energy to work towards improving water resources for people now and for people in the future. To help to put the 3% of fresh water we do have on this planet to good use. Thank you very much.